live broadcast from Canada. My name is Sandra Asante. A look at the headlines. Ethiopia records 1,329 new COVID cases. Kill child leader San takes power as rival condemns coup. No sign of Eritrea withdrawing from Ethiopia. I'll be back with the details of the story. Stay tuned. You're welcome back from the break now to our first story. Addis Ababa, Ethiopia has registered 1,329 new COVID-19 cases in the past 24 hours, taking the nationwide tally to 246,484 as of Wednesday evening, the country's Ministry of Health said. Meanwhile, 35 more deaths from the disease were reported across the country, bringing the national death toll to 300,474, the ministry said. The East African country also reported 1,997 more recoveries, taking the total count to 183,932, it said. According to the ministry, Ethiopia currently has 59,000 and 76 active COVID-19 cases. The country has so far conducted 2,521, 604 COVID-19 tests, it added. Ethiopia's African most populous nation is one of the hardest hit country by COVID-19 in Africa, following South Africa, Morocco and Tunisia. The latest figures from the African Center for Disease Control and Prevention show that Ethiopia's COVID-19 cases counted for about 5% of the continent's total. To our second story, the U.S. State Department said it hasn't seen any evidence to show that Eritrean troops are withdrawing from Ethiopia. This is despite its commitment that both countries have made that the troops would pull out, spokesman Ned Press said on Wednesday during the briefing with reporters. We urge their immediate full withdrawal as we believe it's critical to restoring peace and security and critical to that issue of humanitarian access, he said. The Eritrean soldiers have been in Ethiopia backing the government as a fought a group that challenged the central government's rule. Troops from both countries have been accused of committing atrocities with thousands dying from the conflict according to the human rights groups. To our final story, Chadian President Sam has also taken over as head of Transitional Military Council. Chad faced an uncertain future on Wednesday as the son of Kurd leader Idris Deby took power in what the opposition called a coup. Western allies who rely on the country's fight against extremists pleaded for stability. Derby 68 ruled the impoverishment to desert state for three decades before the army announced his death on Tuesday from wound suffering while leading troops in battle against rebels. His shock death led to immediate concern of a power vacuum in Chad, which is in the heart of the troubled Sahar region, is a key to the West anti extremist fight. Derby's death was announced day after provisional resorts declared him arena of the April 11th election, gave him the sixth term in office. The outcome was never in doubt with a divided opposition, calls for the boycott and a campaign which protest was bound or disparaged. Allies of the late leader moved swiftly to install his son Muhammad Derby, 37, as the president and head of a transitional council military. While dissolving parliament and the government, they tore up Chad's constitution and established a transition charter that lays out basic law for the country of 16 million people which spans Western and Central Africa. The, the charter issued on Wednesday said that Muhammad Debi, a career soldier like his father, who had been the head of the presidential guard, who occupied the functions of the president of the republic and serve as a head of the armed forces. The transition period is meant to last 18 months and led to a democratic election, although it can be extended once. Chad's main opposition party did announce an institutional coup and call on citizens not to obey a legitimate decision by the military council. The threat remained from rebels who launched an incursion into the country's north from Libya on the day of April 11th election despite army claims they have been defeated. The rebel group known as FACT told AFP on Tuesday that it will pursue its offensive after a pause for Debbie's funeral 
on Friday. We categorically rejected transition facts. Spokesman Kingabe Ozoziami de Tapol said our troops are on route towards Dadem now. Armed soldiers in fatigues and members of the presidential guard in their red barrett patrolled the capital after Debbie's death. But on Wednesday, banks and markets and most shops were open while the national flag flew at half state on public buildings. A night curfew has been eased and the country's borders have been reopened. For Western countries, particularly former colonial power France, Debbie's death met the laws of the associate ally in West in Africa's Sahel, where many extremist groups operate. France's 5,100 strong Baham anti terrorist force has its headquarters in Jamena, while Chad's military had had successful raids against extremists. Derby has in the past gone to front lines to lead troops into battles, including during a 2020 raid against the Boko Haram extremist group. France's 5,100 strong Bakhani anti terrorist force has its headquarters in Indiana, while Chad's military has led successful raid against extremists. Debbie had in the past gone to the front line to lead troops in battle, including during a 2020 raid against the Boko Haram extremist group. The AU and France, whose president Emmanuel Macron will attend Debbie's funeral on Friday, along with 10 other heads of state, have called a swift, peaceful transition. UN Chief Antonio Guerres said Debbie was a key partner and had made significant contributions to help combat terrorism. The US urged a peaceful transition that obeys the Constitution in a demand that has been ignored. UN Foreign Affairs Chief Joseph Barrow called for transition to be limited to respect human rights and allow for new inclusion elections. Thank you so much for joining me. This has been the African News. My name is Sandra Asante.